everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you follow me, you know that my favorite though is actually Ardor and I use Ardor to work on my music. Only problem is that with the latest release, they introduced some annoying bugs. Although they fixed those bugs in upstream, probably if you download the nightly version, you have less bugs than the stable 6.6 .6 version. The problem is still there. I think that Ardor 7 will be a very good release. But this gave me the idea to try Z Rhythm and see how mature it is right now. Remind that this is still alpha software. This is really an early release. Alex, the main developer, is working really hard to improve Z Rhythm right now. And it's already usable. Let's see what you can do and how we can compare this though to harder and which new features it will have with the newer releases. So let's set up the rhythm. If you use Windows VSTs using a VST bridge like YaBridge, probably you want to do this. There is one thing that I hope will change in Zrhythm in Linux, and this is the option to change path where Zrhythm will go to find plugins that you want to use. For now, it is hard coded, so Zrhythm just casts the plugins in the folders that normally contain plugins and VSTs. So, what we have to do now is to create a sim link. A uh, link between the plugins that are in Wine folders and the uh, folders that normally Zrim scans. You have to find the location where those plugins are, and you have to create this sim link into, for example, the .vst folder that you have into your home folder. That is just one command that you have to execute, and Zrim will find those plugins and will open them just fine. This will allow you to use your Windows VSTs if you use a Windows VST bridge. So let's take a look at settings window. So we have a bunch of things that we can modify. For example, we can enable generic UIs uh, and we can change backend audio and backend MIDI. I usually use Jack, but this though supports Pipewire. That's exciting. We can also change MIDI controls and audio ports, and that's really useful. And there are uh, a bunch of other options here. But honestly, I think that this program will improve a lot in these months. So we just have to wait because I'm sure uh, there will be many, many other options that are very useful in any do. This though is very good for MIDI and in general I will suggest it to people that use MIDI a lot. It's very useful for electronic musicians. Anyways, as Alex told me, the final goal of Zerim is actually to create an all-in-one DO. So you can probably do everything that you do in uh, any other DO. For example, you can mix and master while having a good interface to perform live and to compose music and create music. As you can see, the MIDI editor is very nice to use. This UI, however, reminds me of Bitwig Studio. And I think that Alex clearly took inspiration from Bitwig Studio. Another good thing about this though, is that probably will be very, very easy to use it for live performances. Like Bitwig Studio, it's very comfortable to create loops. As you can see, some of the Ardor shortcuts are still there. I'm using Ctrl plus left click and I can duplicate the regions and you can extend this blue bar to tell the program which part it has to loop. So it's very easy to extend loops and create live performances. This program has also a very nice feature that allows you to create MIDI bindings. Another cool feature to have is the bounce. You can bounce MIDI tracks into audio tracks directly and this is surprising actually to have this nice feature in an alpha version of this software. Actually, if you use Ardor, you know that bouncing a track is not easy and requires you to use workarounds or you have just to export the track and import the track again and it's not really convenient. This surprises me, because actually it works out of the box. Let's now take a look at the mixer view. As you can see here, there's nothing fancy going on, and some features should be improved. For example, there is this button on the right here that I am expecting to work, but it does nothing. I believe it should create a new track, but it is not working. I believe that many new features will be added in Mixer view. There are other views here. We have the chord pad and modulators view. 
Those are actually very useful. The layout is pretty convincing and I like it. So even though if you don't have the option to separate and detach the windows, you can still have a full screen editor and at least you can change and modify the size of these elements in your layout. Talking about the supported plugin formats, you have the support for LB2, BST and BST3 formats, so that's pretty nice. And also, if you enable this uh, generic UI option, you can see these generic UI interfaces for some plugins. Uh, maybe it's useful if the program fails to show you the interface of the plugin. Or for example, you are running a plugin that doesn't have an interface. This program has not a stable release yet, so expect to find bugs and crashes. So for now you can already work and do something with the rhythm, but don't expect to find a very stable program, because even though the developer is working every day on this program that is his main project, there is a lot to do and bugs to fix to actually have a stable release. But we're going in the right direction. So what do you think about this new open source DAW? Tell me in the comments and if you want to know more about this new open source DAW, just go into the description because I will leave there a link to the official forum where Alex explained more about this DAW and told things about uh, why he created this though and what is his final goal. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always like the video, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching, see you next time.